What's going on everyone? Before we get into today's video, I just want to give you a big thanks. We just hit 100,000 subscribers. Pretty crazy. I honestly never thought we'd get to that. Just being snowmobiles only. The, the, snowmobile, the snowmobile community is such a small niche that it just, yeah, never really thought it'd be possible. So big thanks to everybody for that. And we're going to do a little giveaway over on Instagram in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're following over there if you're not already. What is going on today, guys? This is probably my last day riding Revy. So over a month ago now, some guys left a couple sleds up on the mountain here. And I know where they are. I have the GPS coordinates. I don't think anyone's gone to get them yet. I don't know though, because I can't find the guy that messaged me about them. So we're gonna go up today, see if we can find them. So today is our first day back after our USA tour. And you know, it's good to be back. I had a ton of fun going out of town, but it's always nice coming back here. We're riding with Cody, Brendan, Nathan, and Ron today. I guess I should put my scratchers down. We're pretty much full on spring conditions here in Revy now. Although I heard they got a foot of snow up top unexpectedly. We'll see what we find. I was thinking we're gonna have some nice sun. So the club has this new, uh, new camera. They've got a groomer instead of a gnome like the ski hill. Kind of cool. It's about a month ago now. Uh, the Shaflitas were up here and Johnny and they were riding over yonder to come across a sled in the bush Sitting there nobody around Key was in it. And they're like what the hell so they drove it out drove it to the frisbee cabin It sat here all day and then I posted up on my story on Instagram Hey, if anybody lost the snowmobile <laughs> on frisbee, it's at the cabin and somebody reached out to me and said Oh, that's ours. Uh, there's still two more sleds out there uh, the snow was too deep, we couldn't get out, and we walked to the cabin and got to the cabin just, just after sunrise. And that, that was the <laughs> night we got like two feet of snow, so that would have been absolutely miserable. They dropped me GPS coordinates for one sled. I, I don't remember who messaged me, so I, I don't know if they came and got the sled or not, because I told them I would get it. I told them I'd get it like that week, and uh, it's a month later, and now we're finally just getting to it. The snow was too deep to go get them, and then, uh, and then we ended up doing other things. So we're gonna see if we can go find them down over yonder. So another important part to this story is the guys that got stuck up here and left the sleds, after they walked out, they went home back to Alberta or wherever they were from because they had to go back to work. <laughs> so they just kind of left the sleds and took off. There's definitely no foot of fresh pile up here, like I heard there might be. Pretty sure the sleds are up just a bit more, but we're gonna check just to not waste any time here. It shows one sled should be like right, pretty much right here. Oh, it'll be to completely buried with nothing marking it, no probe or anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, oh look, a lump, but I don't think, I feel like they'd have it down on like somewhat of a bench, not. Nothing. I wish I knew if they're actually still here. Because right? there's old tracks down here. Somebody else might have. It shows us pretty much right on the coordinates for one of the sleds now. But we're not seeing many signs of anything. There is a few old tracks through here. So maybe someone was in here and got it. I don't know how deep the sled would be buried under the snow. So we know we're in the right location here, most likely because the guys said they had a fire going and I see some wood cut off this tree. I'm gonna go down the hill a bit and see if I can find like another spot like this where there would have been a second sled. I think that way. Imagine, wa imagine walking out of here in three feet of snow. I probed and hit that tree and thought for a second that maybe I found something. But I feel like there was one right there and then they shoveled all the snow off because there's a big pile of snow there. But they said there was two sleds, so we'll go and check. 
I think the other sled would have been down here somewhere. There is signs of an old sled track right here. So it makes me think the only people that would have dropped down here came to get this sled out. Man, imagine dropping down here when it's three feet of door valve. Okay, I see the track right here. Follow it. This is like a walking trail, actually, it seems like. They said the lower sled was on the last bench before it really drops off. And uh, I think this would be that. Yeah, it's a cliff right there, so. Wouldn't have been any lower than right here. Oh my God, this is hard. <laughs> I bet you the other side was right there. Like a flat hole here. No real broken branches though. It's weird that there's no like track right here though. Or this is just somewhere the guy was stuck and shoveled forever. I think they might have got the sleds. I'm, all, I'm a little disappointed. I was looking forward to a little recovery mission. Same. Riding some stranger sleds out of, out of the woods. <laughs> Sounds kind of fun. Now we're gonna go find jumps. Now we're gonna go find jumps? I guess. Yeah more broken branches. We're on their track. Manhunter. Wow, the snow is so hard. Oh. <laughs> Such a contrast to riding in the States last week. No sled recoveries for today, but we still want to do some riding since it is our last day, so. We came into the rock garden here. But yeah, today is our last day on the snow for the year. There's not gonna be any snow at home when I go back to Ontario. I can't believe it's the end already. The last two months have absolutely flown by. We had so many good days on the snow with so many good people. <laughs> Where's our nice day? I'm just standing there like that. Just straight up and down. I wanted to climb like straight up through there, right below the cliff, but I think it's a little too steep for this thing. Are you kidding me? Pile drove right into the thing. Elevator. Oh, backwards elevator. Ow. We got Dathan going for the, the shoot I wanted to do. He's on a boost. Big elevator.
Thought for sure he had it that time. turbos. I miss having a Polaris turbo. They sound cool. Yeah, ride a couple days with Caleb and then you want to jump on stupid stuff. Would have been cooler if I bow tied off it and back down. Couldn't hold the wheelie. That's all I got. I'm a filmer's best friend. I did that thing again where I don't say when I'm doing something cool. I'm like, okay, that's all I'm doing. And then the very last hit I do is probably the coolest one. The second one would have been cool filmed from the other side. Let's go, go, go. Shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. What? This sled sucks. We're racing to the bottom with no power. Oh, I can't do it. Everyone rolled by me. Shit, I think I, I took a wrong turn. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's cool. Love it. Very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> oh clutch just slipping away. <laughs> What's in the water there? Brandon's sandwich. It's good. Still good. It's a little soggy. I'm just gonna fall off. <laughs> Look at <laughs> I feel like we're back in Ontario. Well, that was a fun way to end the day and end the trip. Something different. Today we are packing up to head back to Ontario. Ontario. Ont terrible Ontario. If you didn't know, I actually live in Ontario. Uh, that's where my house is. I just come out to BC in the winter time. So we're heading back there. Gotta get back to work, construction, heavy equipment operator. But uh, today, yeah, we gotta, we gotta figure out what to do with these friggin' snowmobiles. We got like four of them, we gotta find somewhere to store. I think we got a buddy we're gonna keep a couple with and probably keep a couple at the house we're renting and we'll take a couple home. I need, I don't know, this is too, too many snowmobiles. I need a trailer or just a garage here. That'd be great. One and two stored. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> gotcha. yeah. Now, pick up the 700. Looks good. I kind of forgot about this thing. Oh. Just as loud as I remember. Actually, louder. <laughs> Ah. 
that's it guys 146 loaded up we got 700 loaded up and the truck is absolutely jammed to the roof front well not quite front i need room for snacks in here but i got my tools sitting right beside me we got a sled in the garage here and all that's left to grab is the camera the most important part time to hit the road It always feels really weird leaving here, knowing I'm not gonna see the mountains again until December, probably. Having Mount Begbie Glacier as a view every day, not too bad. So since I left Ontario to come out here, I've done about 15,000 kilometers, 250 driving hours, well, that includes idling. And our average has been 18.2 liters per hundred. Damn. That was a good avalanche. <laughs> Shit. Just driving through Golden here now. And after Golden, we got that big highway construction. And it always is so intriguing to me. It seems like such a wild project. Sea cans are just demolished from rock, I guess, rolling down the hills. There's the old highway in the corner, right against the cliff. I wonder how far down it is below us to the road or to the ground. I'll have to search up what that construction project is worth because it's gotta be worth more than any project like ever in BC here. Number one. Fill up number two is a little frosty. It's a nice ice fog. Well, I caved and got a hotel last night. I was just gonna sleep in my truck, but we still got a long drive ahead of us. So we, we got a good night's sleep. And today we'll make a lot of headway and it's minus 20 here this morning. Freaking freezing. It's beautiful. It's sunny here today. I'm gonna have a nice drive. Until we get to the blizzard that's about uh, four or five hours away from here. Usually when I drive back in the spring, it's supposed to be nice. Nice driving like this, not minus 20 in, in blizzards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Just rolling down the highway, minding my own business, passing this truck. And then I see a white square in the window. I look over, I see Muskoka Matt as I'm cruising by, slam on the brakes and uh, roll back. <laughs> and fill up number three. $148 at 179 and we put the cover on the sled. Trucks are driving sideways down the road, the wind's blowing them. I had trouble opening my door when I stopped here. Return to Canada. Where we end up now? We just came from the States. Turn left onto State Avenue Northeast. So we are in the States detouring through the States over to Sault Ste. Marie because all the highways in Northern Ontario are closed from the snowstorm. So I was really nervous that we weren't gonna get across the border because I don't actually have an ownership for that yellow sled. But no questions asked. On we go. Actually, they did ask me for a proof of vaccination, which I can't believe they actually asked for that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Number four, an American, which is Canadian. Oh, <laughs> I feel ridiculous. I just had to clean the ice off my truck with a hammer because I couldn't even open my passenger side door because the ice was so thick, built right up over the running boards up to there. Like, 
inches thick on my door. We're rolling into Duluth, Minnesota here, and we need to find something to eat. I always do this when I'm driving. It's almost 10 o'clock now, and I haven't eaten anything almost all day. I kind of forget <laughs> to eat. And the first place we see is a Burger King. I haven't been to a Burger King in probably 15 years. That's a measly little fill up. Number four or five. Got some death going in, gotta love this stuff. 6.30 in the morning here now, it's starting to get light out, but I always get tired this time of day when I drive all night long. So we're gonna take a quick power nap until it's light out and then we'll keep going. We're off to the races again. Still a little tired. Oh look, another thing of death. We are just about there. Still got some snow left. I don't know if it's enough to ride, but I think we maybe got in enough riding. I don't get stopped the entire way back. I've been here for a few minutes now. And that is it, 34 hours of driving. If we count the hour we slept in the truck, we only have a half tank left, so let's add like another 80 bucks to make that a full tank. 18.4 liters per hundred. We were getting like 17.5 until I uh, really stepped on the throttle and 3,500 kilometers approximately. I do have a little bit bigger tire, so about four or five percent more kilometers than what it actually says. And that is it for the season. We actually may have got out for one ride around home here. Uh, not looking like much left now, but just want to give a big thanks again to everybody for following along throughout our season and all of our crazy adventures. This year was like unmatched to how many <laughs> interesting days we had on the snow. Let's just say that. Uh, another great year. Thanks everybody for watching. Can't wait to see what next year brings.